To make our Paul Klee castles, we are going to be using these temper paints. Now they get dirty, so we're going to use a damp towel. And it's a nice big damp towel. So just wipe off any mess up, any yuck that's on the temper cake. And you can just clean that up with a damp towel that we'll just keep in this bucket. Now for each one of these castle bricks, you need to fill in a different color. You can start with the colors that are on your palette. And so there is seven colors for you because we're not going to use white. Now see the yellow got a little messed up so I just used my towel. There we go. Now it's a nice white yellow. And I can use brown too. And black. But I'm not going to use white because we're working on a white piece of paper. We'll use white later. Because now, since each color has to be a different color, I have run out of colors. So now it's time to mix. First, I'm going to try a little green in the blue. And look at that. I get this beautiful aqua blue green, which is different than my regular green or my regular blue. I wonder what happens if I take this blue green and add some white to it. And I get a, a tint of that aqua. After you've colored in, after you've mixed your colors, be sure you wipe those tempera paints nice and clean. You want to make sure that they're nice and clean. Here's a yellow green and wipe it clean. Now when you're working with your partner, your partner could be using the same colors that you mix up. You guys can mix together and use the same mixed up colors. Little yellow orange, sort of a tangerine color. And see how I paint in each square nice and neat. Painting in the sides and then filling it in. Making sure that I leave my palette nice and clean. And I can fold and refold this towel so that there's a new space for it. And I'm just experimenting with mixing with different colors. When you need fresh water, go get some fresh water. And continue to mix your colors. You can experiment with all these different kinds of colors. Be sure you color in nice and neat. And be sure that you keep your palette nice and clean. Now you need to remember to wash out, to keep rinsing those paint palettes. You don't want your paint to become mucky and yucky. So be sure you keep rinsing it out, keep wiping it clean as you fill in the rest of your castle. And you can even color in the door. I'm just going to color it in brown. I'm going to add some little 
uh, door parts. Oh, look, I forgot to fill in just that little tiny bit. Fill that little tiny bit in. And add some black lines and doorknob. Okay, now that our castle is dry, we're gonna cut it out very carefully. And make sure you cut out these little parts here so it looks like a castle. And then set that off to the side. Now we're going to create a background for our castle. Write your name and class code on the back, flip it over, and fold it in half lengthwise like this, horizontally because we are creating a horizon line where the ground and the sky meet. Now we're gonna draw in trees, bushes, lakes like that. Remember, there are no trees that float in the sky, so all of your trees need to start below the horizon line. And then I just like to put a curvy line for the tops of the trees, and a little curvy line for my bush. And I'm gonna make this a blueberry bush. I'll put some blueberries on there. And then I'm going to color in my bush and the tops of my trees with curly lines. You want to use curly lines so it looks more like little leaves, not scribbles. We're not going to do any scribbling. The direction of your line is very important when we're coloring in with crayons. And you can make your artwork look really good by using the right direction for your crayons. So see how I'm using curly lines here? Nice curly lines. Then for the bark, you want to use vertical lines. You're barking up the right tree here. These lines go up and down because bark on a tree goes up and down. Then it's time for the grass. Use a different color green than you did for your trees or for any bushes. And you're gonna use these short little up and down lines. And we're gonna make a bunch of rows of this. Remember your grass should not go above that horizon line. So go all the way across and then start another row of grass. And you can see how this now is looking more like grass and not like a bunch of scribbles coloring in each row. And the reason we did the trees is because now we know where we don't have to color the grass. As you get further down, you can make your rows of grass look bigger and bigger. Because as we know, things that are far, far away look itty bitty. So grass that's further away is going to look smaller and grass that is closer to us will look bigger. And you wanna be sure you color all the way down. Now my hand's getting a little tired, so I just put my crayon between my two fingers like a peace sign, and then I switched it back to regular. And that's a way that if your hand gets a little tired, you can save your hand. Now I have this in fast forward mode, but this way goes a lot faster than if you were just to try to scribble it all in. You want to color all the way down to the bottom of the page. Now doesn't that look like a nice neat grass? Now it's time for the sky. I'm going to have some clouds so I color in the clouds first. Now please remember clouds are white. Sky is blue. Do not color the clouds in blue. But use the side of the crayon and we're going to make horizontal lines. And that way our sky looks more like a sky. And by using the side of the crayon, it will go a lot faster. And by having some clouds in there, we don't have to color as much sky. Color it all in, all the way down to the grass. Because there is not a giant white void between the top of a sky and the ground. Once you're all done coloring and you cut out your castle, decide where your castle's gonna go. Get some glue, some nice liquid glue, and glue it down, and then you're all done with your beautiful color creation.